Hey everyone, I'm Joanny Pallero. I'm with Lenovo and I'm the Director of Advanced Solutions Marketing. I lead a global team. We're focused on solutions, building a stronger framework for our customers so that we can pair our technology with innovative software and applications and services that um, are good and useful in any industry. I'm joined today, the pleasure of having Jason Kay with me. And Jason, please uh, tell us who you're with. Sure, I'm Jason Kay, I'm with IMS Evolve. Uh, we're a software company that specialize in providing a software augmentation layer, uh, most people would call it uh, in the IoT space, that sits across the physical infrastructure of our customers. Um, large applications, I think we're going to talk predominantly today about food retailers. Uh, so across physical assets like air conditioning, refrigeration, lighting, solar arrays, uh, submetering uh, for, for electricity monitoring, and our software essentially standardizes all of that disparate infrastructure, creates a full read-write capability, and integrates that with enterprise systems and other sources of data so we can make better decisions and automate outcomes for our customers. Yeah, I bet, I mean, that's definitely a topic that I'm sure a lot of retailers are interested to hear more about. I think when we talk about the importance of energy, energy consumption, how that impacts the bottom line. Sure. You know, that's something that I would think, you know, every retailer wants to figure out how to optimize and build solutions to address that. So why do you think this topic is crucial? What would you say IMS Evolve can offer insights into a new narrative for the optimization of energy and the consumption of energy in the food retail space? I think the important thing is about delivering an outcome. So Food retail is at the absolute core of our economies, is at the core of our lives, everybody has to eat. I think that with the cost of living crisis that we've experienced, with inflation being particularly felt on food, um, and with one of the major operational areas of expenditure um, being energy for a food retailer. So the entire cold chain in developed economies is between 16 and 18% of total electricity consumption. So you're talking about, about that being a major part of their operational expenditure. So after they've bought their goods to sell, after they've paid their staff, it's one of those major, looking after that infrastructure and paying the electricity bill to run it is one of their major areas of, of operational expenditure. So for a retailer who's concentrating on operational expenditure, they can pass that on in terms of price efficiency to the customers and they're demonstrating that they've got that flexibility and they're prepared for the impact of changes in energy price for changes in uh, accessibility, food security, and other things. So any, it's at the core of their business model to be prepared to manage these kinds of areas of expenditure. And I would say in addition to focusing on the numbers behind their energy bills, what are some of the other elements that can help them make better decisions about deploying a solution like what you offer? You know, yes, they look at the energy bills and they're looking at food waste perhaps, but what are some of the other elements that you could offer a customer would really care about. Yeah, so again, contextually with their business model, operational expenditure is key, but also they need to be able to demonstrate that they are being, um, they're at the core of our economy, they're at the core of our communities, so they need to demonstrate that they're being responsible. So um, we all know about being greener, we all know about sustainability, we all know about waste, uh, demonstrating innovation that's in that environment, but also being able to react at speed. Um, so it's very important that they are frugal with their investments in these areas, that they look towards solutions that have multiple applications, that they think about their environment as an ecosystem that can be influenced by external issues like the weather, that can be influenced by external pressures like price point, uh, and new opportunities, say markets like demand response, where they can actually look at their building or their refrigeration systems as a thermal battery and shift the way they consume energy to a time of day when there isn't so much pressure on the infrastructure. So it's about being flexible, it's about being innovative, but it's about recognizing what they're there to do, which is give high quality products to their customers at the right price. That's very interesting, Jason. I think um, as we explore further how this partnership even started, right, we think about ways that Lenovo OEM and IMS Evolve kind of started their journey together through the Crosswave program, through the, op the opportunity for you to talk to customers, 
that are in the space that are just basically looking at hardware optimization and introducing this, this new concept of energy optimization in the food retail space. Um, what are some of the ways that you think Lenovo has supported you as a partner in the fact that we've been able to offer you the right technology to help with some of the deployments? And then maybe if you could give me an example of an, an example of a customer deployment that you worked with end to end, how that Lenovo uh, device came in and helped, and then what are some of the elements in the software application piece that you were able to work with that customer to build their custom solution for their pain points? I think we've moved into a, a, a different phase in appetite for capital investment. And the appetites are there if they create outcome, but the cost of capital has significantly increased. So interest rates are up, um, it's not so readily available. So what's really important for customers is predictable capital investment and speed of outcome from those capital investments. And the real power of the partnership with Lenovo was global scale, provision of product on time within reasonable time scales, and the level of innovation that uh, Lenovo are prepared to undertake in partnership with us to create as much of a turnkey solution as possible. So right product, in right volumes, in right place, already flashed with the software, yeah. with the right installation partners available for us, because the, the key is, our software is very dynamic and active. It doesn't require our customers to do very much for many of it, its applications, but it needs to be installed at speed so that those savings can pass on to the customer quickly. And really what we've been impressed with, with the Crosswave partnership, with Lenovo's uh, whole attitude and approach of engagement is that it's sensitive to our customers' business models and it recognizes the requirement for innovation and taking a step further into the value proposition to make sure customers get value quickly, that they release that value. Yeah, and I bet that that's at the crux right now when you think about how IoT has transformed the retail space, the importance of the infrastructure, but also the, an the analysis piece, right? The data integrity, what's happening and to help make better and faster decisions. So that's also something that I think resonates very well, especially in the retail space. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, there are literally seams of value sitting inside data that sits inside disparate systems and then being able to do something about it. So I think that in the uh, data analytics marketplace, there's been a huge amount of self-congratulation of taking a bunch of data from here and here where it wasn't really used, lumping it all into one space, putting lots of pretty pictures and dashboards and reports over the top of it and congratulating ourselves. Well, the reality is we still haven't done anything with that data. So what we're about is in our approach with our customers is taking that data, maybe from multiple places, and applying it and unlocking the value from it. So I'll give a, a worked example of that, Chahani. So a system that sits across all uh, of the disparate control manufacturers that sit across a refrigeration estate, and a completely unique naming convention for what each of those refrigeration cases are called. Then we over here, we've got a very sophisticated, and one of our customers, very sophisticated merchandising system with its own naming convention for each of the individual refrigeration cases where they're in real time recording what product they've got in each case. So merging those data, to, merging those pieces of data together, having one single way of looking at that, at that estate and naming those devices in that estate and recognizing that we had a huge opportunity because not only if when we knew what product was in what case, we could better chill for that product to have a longer shelf life and a better experience for the customer. We recognized that because retailers were risk averse, they were over chilling those environments. So we were able to in real time take that data, contextualize it and actually apply it and release millions of degrees of cooling demand from our customer's environment. And then not only overnight reduce their energy bill by millions of dollars, but actually as we caught up with the customer complaints data on certain produce classes in those environments, we had a 30% reduction inside six weeks of customer complaints on certain produce classes in those environments, which were sensitive to being over chilled. Things like bag salad, things like dairy products. That's incredible. I can't imagine that more retailers should be kind of evaluating their operational efficiency better and maybe having more of a discussion on energy optimization. Why do you think that is? Why do you think it's not a, a more well-known topic where retailers are really trying to solve for this on a more readily, ba regular basis? 
I think it's an interesting challenge for buyers in the marketplace. So there's a, a multitude of reasons, I think, that play into this. First of all, um, those organizations that move data around and generate really insightful reports tend to, in their marketing literature, um, draw that linear cause and effect from that insight yeah. to the value, to the potential value for the customers. But actually, they don't do any of the last mile piece. So that, that actual controlling and changing the temperature of the fridge based on the insight of where, where the product is. So, Customers could get confused about products that they're buying that draw that linear cause and effect and actually having access to that. The other side of it is um, necessarily due to different types of expertise and different compliance environments. So the need in your management structure to have ownership over compliance driven environments. Um, you've got different levels of ownership. So I've just described uh, a marketing, a store operations, a facilities management, an energy department and an engineering department set of stakeholders across one use case that I'm describing. And often those different stakeholder groups that have got different challenges and different targets to, to hit each year, it can be quite difficult to corral them around one particular kind of message. So it's not intuitive that actually all of these areas need to buy into, need to open up and need to support the kind of uh, use case that can be delivered from that environment. So that's another aspect, their own organizational design. It's almost like they're taking it for granted a little bit and perhaps thinking it's already getting solved somewhere else, right? I think you might be faced with a challenge where you would talk to a customer who thinks they kind of do that already yeah, yeah. because they have perhaps got the ability to remotely change their uh, temperatures in their fridges. They might be able to dial in and do it, but can they broadcast it? Can they do it in real time? Can they make those calculations based on real-time interactions with merchandising data, real-time interactions with weather data? depending on what kind of outcome you're looking for. The answer tends to be no, but that's not necessarily what their perception is internally of their capability. Right, right. That's amazing, incredible. I mean, I think I've learned so much about energy optimization. Um, do you have any final thoughts or advice that you'd like to give food retailers? Um, you know, we're at NRF uh, in New York, uh, the Natural National Retail Federation show. There's a lot of retailers here. There's an entire floor dedicated to food retail. Um, do you have any advice or anything that you'd like to offer to kind of, uh, you know, maybe offer more insights about energy optimization? Yeah, I think that I would be um, very open-minded when I looked at solutions. Um, I think I would be wary of linear or vertically integrated solutions, so one widget that does one thing unless it was incredibly cost-effective to employ and non-disruptive to my trading pattern. Um, I would look for interoperability. I would look for openness. So any product that I was buying from uh, someone in the marketplace, I'd look for that to be readily interoperable with my own data environments and interoperable with other systems that would uh, create the opportunity for value, let's say, through collaboration. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Jason, it's been great chatting with you about food energy, food optimization, energy optimization. I think we've learned a lot. I hope the retailers and the listeners understand a little bit more about maybe how to dig into some of these areas that your IMS Evolve software can help with. And it's it's been a great, great chat with you. Great, well thank you for your time. Thank you.